If u is equal to f of x and v is equal to g of x, then the product rule can be expressed as follows. The derivative of u times v is u prime v plus u v prime. Or just rearranging this, subtracting uh, u prime v from both sides, we get that u v prime is equal to the derivative of u times v minus u prime v. Integrating both sides means uh, gives us that the integral of u v prime with respect to x is u times v minus the indefinite integral of u prime v with respect to x or simply the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. Let's see an example. So this method is called integration by parts and in this example we have u equals the natural logarithm of x and v equals x so that would uh, give us the integral of the natural logarithm of x dx. Now uh, that's uh, the left hand side of the integration by parts formula. On the right hand side we have to have the product of the two functions so that's x times the natural logarithm of x minus the integral of v that is x times the derivative of u the derivative of natural logarithm of x is 1 over x dx. So this integral that we subtract is just the integral of 1. So we get x times the natural logarithm of x minus the integral of 1 dx. That is x plus any constant c. Therefore we get that the integral of the natural logarithm of x dx is x times the natural logarithm of x minus x plus any constant c. Okay, let's solve some more problems using integration by parts. How should we assign the roles of u and dv in this indefinite integral so that integration by parts can help us find the integral? So pause the video and make your selection now. Hope you paused it and that led me to the first option. So setting u equals x and dv equals e to the x dx means that du is simply dx and v is e to the x plus any constant, but I just choose that constant to be zero now. Uh, so if we go with this, with this uh, assignment of roles, then integration by parts tells us that this is integral is equal to u times v, that's x times e to the x, minus the integral um, v du, so v is e to the x, du is simply dx. So this integral on the right hand side is now simpler to find than the integral we started with. If we would have gone with the other choice, u being e to the x, then du would have been e to the x dx, and v, for example, x squared over 2. And that would have made the integral on the right hand side more complicated than the integral that we started with. So we just go with the first choice and continue uh, evaluating this. This is x times e to the x minus the integral of e to the x is just e to the x and any constant can be added to this. Let's look at the next question. What roles should we assign to u and dv in this indefinite integral? So pause the video and make your selection now. Hope you paused it and I've selected uh, u equals x and dv equals the cosine of x dx in this case again. Um, having u equals x means du is dx whereas dv being the cosine of x dx means that v could be for example the sine of x and then integration by parts gives us that the integral of x times the cosine of x dx is x times the sine of x minus the integral of v du that is the sine of x dx. Now this second integral on the right hand side we can now easily evaluate and obtain x times the sine of x being the first term minus um, minus the cosine of x so that's a plus a cosine of x plus any constant c. Okay let's look at the next question. How should we assign the roles of u and dv in this indefinite integral to be able to apply integration by parts and actually find the integral? So pause the video and make your selection now. Hope you paused it and I've realized that it doesn't really matter. Either way we are going to end up with an integral that looks just as complicated as the one that we start with but we will still be able to find our integral. So let me show you how. how. So 
let's just go with the first choice u equals e to the x then du is e to the x dx whereas dv being sine x dx means that v could be minus the cosine of x for example now going with that choice integration by parts tells us that u times v is what's on the right hand side that's uh, e to the x times minus the cosine of x so it's minus e to the x cosine of x from which we need to subtract the integral of v du well that's minus cosine of x e to the x dx so that minus sign combined with that minus sign becomes a plus and then e to the x cosine of x dx is what we have okay now this is the integral i was referring to on the right hand side we get an integral that looks just as complicated as the one we started with but doing the integration by parts once more we will act, it will actually help us find the integral so let's just still call e to the x u and now in the second application of integration by parts it's the cosine of x dx that we will call dv that means that du is still e to the x dx but now v must be uh, for example the sine of x if we use this and apply integration by parts once more then just carrying the terms that we had it's minus e to the x the cosine of x to which we add u times v so that's um, e to the x sine x minus the integral of v du minus the integral of v du so that's e to the x sine x dx and now if you look you can notice that it's the same integral same indefinite integral um, that we started from appears here with the minus sign so if I were to call this integral that we are after um, say i then what we notice is that it's the same integral same indefinite integral which we could call i but remember indefinite integrals represent a family of functions that could differ by a constant so here we should make sure that this constant is accounted for so we should we could add any constant here plus c just to make sure that we don't forget about that and then write down what we obtain we obtain that i the integral that we are after is equal to well e to the x is a common factor here let me uh, factor it out and then we get sine of x minus the cosine of x and then from this we subtract i the integral that we are after plus any constant c now uh, we just need to add i to both sides to get 2i equals e to the x sine x minus the cosine of x plus c dividing both sides uh, we get the integral that we are after be a half times e to the x times the sine of x minus cosine of x and that constant is also multiplied by a half but that still means it's an arbitrary constant so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one